so right here we've got information on the compass as well as the mini map there's an enemy right here in the building below him as well as enemies in the ruins area now what he did here was not the best move he just basically got too excited he decided to just rush into it and yes he did pick up some kills but you know that's not going to last you long you're not going to be able to stay alive as long as you possibly can by doing that but what's going on guys if you guys are interested in watching me play live my twitch is in the description down below Make sure to hit that follow button and I hope to see you there. Peace. All right, and welcome back to another episode of Subscriber Review where I review your gameplay and I pretty much just offer my tips and tricks on things that they could do better so that they don't make the same mistakes again. Now, if you're interested in me reviewing your gameplay, make sure you check out the description down below where it will take you to a submission form and all you got to do is just follow the guidelines to a T and I will most likely review your gameplay. Now, keep in mind, I'm looking for players who genuinely want to improve. All right, so for today's video, the player that we're reviewing his current kd ratio is a 0.91 kd he's been playing since black ops 4 he said he sucked so he bought modern warfare during black friday and he has played a lot and he has tried to get better and his reason for submission was that he wants to enjoy the game and maybe go on youtube but his main reason is that he wants to be a good player and have fun and i know you know when you're doing well in the game you do have fun and when you're doing bad it's the exact opposite experience so uh let's just get into the gameplay and just dissect exactly what he can improve on now one thing right off the bat that i can already suggest is to turn off that motion blur having the motion blur on is going to make it a harder time for you to be able to see the opponents that could potentially be around you when you're moving so swiftly around the map so make sure you turn off weapon blur as well as world motion blur also your mini map could be a lot bigger i see that it's a circle right now you can actually change that to a square so that you actually see a lot more on your mini map now i do notice he's following these footsteps and he's been flanking around on the map since the beginning he does see a couple enemies here he engages he misses his first couple shots he throws that thermite grenade and he's able to get both of the kills now yes he did come up on those kills but i do have some insight on this particular situation so he's coming up on some two kills right here clearly these two guys don't see where he's at and this is exactly why i say flanking is really beneficial to helping you stay alive and getting easier kills these guys have no idea that he's here so anyways in this situation i would not have fired right away because i don't have a clear shot you always want to make sure that your shot is clear and it's clean because this is what's going to happen as you can see he misses shots and now he's forced in a situation where he could potentially die and miss out on these cleaner kills so yes he did get the two kills but it could have been a lot cleaner all right so now he's at the top of the gun shop here oh and he gets taken out right there hold on let's just back it up real quick so in this situation this is exactly why i always say before you proceed to any part of the map always make sure that it's clear and you always have to pre-aim now had he had pre-aimed and momentarily looked into the area that he was about to advance into he probably could have avoided dying because there actually was somebody standing right there looking right at him so the fact that he actually just decided to go gung-ho and jump out of the window that was the result of that so you have to keep that in mind is that having that rushers mentality you have to put that away man in this game you have to think about your every move unfortunately because of the way that you die so fast in this game you could be dying to somebody who's just sitting in a random corner that you didn't even know was there all right so now he's here in the ruins he obviously sees there's a lot of activity going on here in the marketplace so it looks like he, he he's a very aggressive type of player so that was a really good kill there so now he's in the gun shop i would definitely go up here for a good vantage point maybe clear out the area see if there's any remaining enemies here all right so he's reloading so he's very aware of how much ammo he has left which is good all right so it looks like he doesn't really know where to go okay good so he turns on his dead silence and that's exactly what you need to be doing when you're in areas of where opponents could most likely be and I do like the fact that he opened that door so gently because when you barge open that door, it's very audible and enemies will know that you're in the area. He's flanking right now and flanking is going to result in much easier kills. So I can tell that he probably does watch my videos and follows my advice because when you do that, you're most likely going to come up on some easier kills and shoot the enemies from behind. All right. So, okay. Okay. One little 
Small minor detail, once again, is notice how he just runs here without checking his left. Every time you're going to move from point A to point B, you always want to go check to see if it's clear to even advance further. So that's just one thing that you could start practicing doing when you're moving around the map so that you don't get shot from the side. So he does come up on a really nice flank there. That guy had no idea. He's actually hurt right now. His teammate just died in front of him. It's a good idea to use that stim shot. I would not chase after this guy, honestly. And that is the result of that. So, you know, all right. So when we back it up in this situation, his teammate clearly died, right? And as you can see, his screen is super red. So in this situation, he's got a stim shot. You got to use that in these situations because there's clearly an enemy in the vicinity. And if you don't heal yourself right away, this enemy is potentially going to tap you in one shot and you're dead. Moving on with the gameplay, he decides to just bum rush it. You know, every time he sees an enemy... He's just going to go bum rush him and you don't want to do that. You just want to stay where you are and let them come to you. Let yourself heal up. Do what you need to do to make sure that you put yourself in the best possible way to survive in that situation. So here comes the enemy that pops up out of nowhere. This guy actually just came out of nowhere. All right. So he does get the kill, but he frantically rushes this guy. Now, if you remember in this situation right here, see, he got the hit marker on that guy that went into this little room right here. This guy is going to be expecting him to go through that door. He's waiting for him. So yes, he did pick up the kill here. But now if you think from the enemy's perspective, he's definitely going to be waiting for him to come around this corner right here and watch what happens. That's exactly what happens. You just have to think things through. Think about what you would do if you were the enemy as well. You got to put yourself in their shoes. All right. So just running out here in the middle of the open is obviously not a good idea. As you can see, he nearly died and he's still being picked off. So Definitely use your stim shot because even if you don't need to use the stim shot in certain situations, it does give you a lot more confidence to go back into the gunfight. So here he picks off a nice little kill off that head glitch right there, but I would definitely go upstairs to get a better to get a better vantage point and see what's going on. And again, he's tunnel visioning it at this point. So if we just rewind this part, watch he throws his thermite and as he's throwing the thermite, he's unaware that there actually was an enemy right here. Now, had he had actually gone up to the top story of the gun shop, he would have seen that there were enemies here as well. So just staying here on the bottom is not a good idea because you want to have a good, clear view of your surroundings. And he just kind of stood here out in the middle of the doorway. You know, you're pretty much just putting yourself at risk. And that is the result of that. All right, so here he is. He does notice these footsteps. I'm sure he wants to follow. I would not go out there. You know, it's smoky. You don't know what's going on. All right, so one piece of advice that I can offer is if you're trying to traverse from this point to the house, for example, it would be a smarter idea to actually take the shortcut because there's a doorway right here that you can go into the house and then go upstairs for a good vantage point, as I was talking about earlier, instead of just cutting through the middle right here. Because when you cut through the middle right here, you're basically in the opponent's line of sight and you do put yourself at a situation to die. So uh that's why i would not recommend just running out there in the middle you have to make sure that your positioning is on point all right so now that he's spawned here on the other side of the bridge not really sure why he turned on his dead silence because we all know the actions happening at the ruins area so okay so it looks like he's actually trying to push into their spawn all right so he notices there's some activity going on over here it looks like he's having a hard time just trying to decide what he wants to do and I would say if he slowed his game down, it, he would have a much easier time of deciding what to do. You know, like it's kind of like driving a car. If you're driving really fast and there happens to be a potential accident waiting to happen, you know, you don't have time to react. However, if you're driving a lot slower, you, it, it, you do have a lot more time to react if you know what I'm saying. So again, he's rushing too hard. I know that there's a lot of enemies here based on the UAV and the minimap. I'm not sure if this is going to last him long. Yeah, so let me just break this down here real quick. What happened? So the, the teammate does call in a UAV here in a second. All right, there's the UAV. So if you pause it right here, when your teammate calls in a UAV, you got to wait for that sweep first to see what's going on, assess the situation, then make your move based on your conclusion. So right here, we've got information on the compass as well as the minimap. There's an enemy right here in the building below him, as well as enemies in the ruins area. Now, what he did here was not the best move. He just basically got too excited. He decided to just rush into it. And yes, he did pick up some kills, 
But, you know, that's not going to last you long. You're not going to be able to stay alive as long as you possibly can by doing that. You literally put yourself in the middle of gunfire and where enemies are going to be. Now, So now he's coming up on the ladder once again. All right. So in this situation, I would just stay here. Yep. I would not go out there. You just, yep. Exactly what I thought was going to happen. So if you guys have seen my video breakdowns on Ramaza, you know that I always talk about this spot. It is a great spot because you get a good clear view of the enemy spawn and how I know that they're spawning in here. Number one, we've got the compass telling us so. The UAV confirms that as well. And also, if you look at our positioning of the teammates on the minimap, all of our teammates are behind us. So that only leaves this area in front of us to be where the enemies are going to be coming in from. So with all that said, if you just stay up here, you can literally just wait for the enemies to pop out, pick them off one by one. Boom, easy kills. Now, the fact that he just keeps rushing towards the enemies tells me that, you know, he's, he gets a little too excited. You know, you, I can tell that he just wants to rack up the kills, which he is racking up the kills, but it's at the cost of his death. So I would highly recommend to just play a little bit slower, slow it down, and just don't get too excited when you see those things. All right, so now he's pushing side of ruins here. And he's looking to go back into their spawn because that's where they were last. He does pick up that kill. I would definitely slow it down here. I would stay here. I would not push. Yes, he did get some kills there. Yeah. All right, so his teammate is actually getting shot there coming in from the spawn. So it looks like he's curious whether or not he should come out or not. No, that would not be a good idea. As you can see, he's getting tapped. His teammate actually just died in front of him right here. As you can see, his teammate's on the floor and that white skull does confirm that. All right. I would actually go for the flank right here. Push into the ruins right now. Yep. There you go. You should be able to get a good flank. And there's one right there. Okay. I would not just stand there and watch him die. Like, let's just talk about this situation really quick. As you can see, he just kind of stands there. Now, when he's standing there, you're pretty much just wasting your time and you're allowing the opponent to go ahead and attack you from areas that you could get shot from, which would be right here. And as you can see, boom, there's an enemy right there and he got tapped. So when you're moving around the map and you see enemies, you want to move fast. You want to get your kills and be alert and always assume there's going to be another opponent around, especially when you're flanking. You're always in a situation where there's most likely going to be more enemies. He's trying to get that high ground, which is good. And one thing I did like about his gameplay so far is that he's pre-aiming around those corners. He's doing a good job. However, I noticed when he's going up to objects, he could do a better job of pre-aiming instead of pre-aiming at the last second. So, so here's what I'm talking about. So as he approaches, he sees an enemy, he shoots him. Good job. There was another enemy that he spotted. So he wants to get a much closer shot. So as we see here, he approaches at this point, he should have already pre-aimed because look at that. The opponent already knew he was coming and he's at a better position to kill him in that gunfight. So had he had pulled up his gun a lot sooner and pre-aimed, he would have had at least a 50-50 chance of surviving that gunfight. All right, so he's mounting there. He's checking the area to see if it's clear. So it seems that he does have a good general idea of what to do, but it doesn't seem to be consistent. So you have to get in a much better habit of doing those things before you approach areas, you know. Make sure you're constantly thinking about it, you know, thinking steps ahead to prevent what's going on. All right, so the enemy actually just called in an airstrike. And when you hear that there's an airstrike, you always got to take cover right away. You know, don't just run out there because you could potentially die. So here I would I would chill here for a little bit. Let the situation unfold. Look out this window, see what's going on. All right. OK, so there's clearly activity going on on the opposite side of the map where he's going to right now. So another thing that I noticed that he could have done better was the fact that he just jumped through the middle of the map right here like this literally puts you at a bad spot because enemies could be shooting him from the side over here and you know that's just asking to get shot so when you're traversing around the map like that always keep in mind that you always want to stay close to objects you want to stay close to the wall so that you can minimize the variables that you do get shot from all right so here he is he's on the market rooftops once again he's checking down all right you better look to your left that that is exactly what i was talking about earlier you know if you're not checking if you're not consistently checking your sides before you're moving around the map you are going to get tapped like that so okay all right yeah he, he is playing way too aggressive he could have just pre-aimed that i know he did get the kill but 
You know, it, it seems very sporadic. His movements seem very sporadic and too aggressive, you know, if that makes sense. He's really good at finding where the opponents are. He's got the whole flanking thing down. However, he gets a little too excited when he does see enemies. And I believe that if he were to just approach the situation a little bit more cautiously, he could minimize the amount of deaths that he has. You know, just think about the situations first before you get into it. Is it safe? Do I have a clean shot on the opponents, etc., etc. So yeah, guys, make sure to leave your suggestions down below in the comments on things that he could possibly improve on that I may not have touched upon. And also leave a like on this video if you want this series to continue and I will keep bringing this content on a weekly basis. So yeah guys, make sure you subscribe around here if you're new. Join Turbo Nation today, make it official, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.